Picture a young woman in a lab coat, peering into a microscope, on the verge of a breakthrough in traditional African medicine. Now, imagine that same woman lying lifeless on her living room floor, her research notes scattered nearby. This is the stark reality of Dr. Didi Lekhanyane's story. A tale of scientific promise cut short by domestic violence. Born in 1992 in Mato, South Africa, Didi was a beacon of academic excellence from her early years. Her passion for science led her to the University of Johannesburg, where she earned a Bachelor of Science in Biochemistry and Molecular Biology. You see, Didi wasn't just another student. She was a rising star in her field, making significant strides in researching traditional African medicine. In June 2024, Didi's potential was recognized when she was named one of the 200 young South African trailblazers in climate change and environment. However, just a month later, her promising future was tragically cut short. The discovery of her body in her home sent shockwaves through the scientific community and beyond, leaving many to wonder about the brilliant discoveries that would never come to be. Behind every tragic ending lies a story, and Didi Lekanyane's is no exception. Her relationship with Siso Mashabane began like many others, full of promise and shared dreams. The couple met in 2018, bonding over their shared ambitions and cultural background. Sisso, a successful businessman, seemed to be the perfect match for the brilliant young scientist. Their love story blossomed quickly. By 2021, they were welcoming their first child into the world, a joyous occasion that seemed to cement their bond. The young family settled into a comfortable home in Bramley. Johannesburg, ready to build their future together. From the outside, it appeared to be the perfect union of love and success. However, as is often the case, appearances can be deceiving. The first cracks in their relationships began to show in 2022, just a year after the birth of their child. It was then that Didi opened an assault case against Cecil at the Edenville police station. This shocking development hinted at a darker undercurrent in their seemingly idyllic life. The assault case, however, didn't lead to the end of their relationship. Instead, it triggered a family intervention, a common response in South African culture where family unity is often prioritized over individual well-being. Under pressure from both families, Didi withdrew the case. The incident was swept under the rug treated as a private matter to be resolved within the confines of their marriage. This response to Didi's cry for help highlights a pervasive issue in many cultures, not just in South Africa. Women are often expected to endure difficult, even abusive relationships for the sake of maintaining family harmony and upholding traditional values. Despite the apparent reconciliation, the underlying issues in their relationship persisted. The facade of a happy marriage began to crumble, revealing the cracks that had been peppered over by early 2024, just months before her tragic death. Didi was expressing her desire to leave the marriage. Her unhappiness had reached a breaking point, and she was ready to take the difficult step of ending her relationship with Cecil. But leaving wasn't as simple as packing her bags and walking out the door. The prospect of becoming a single mother, the potential stigma of divorce, and the fear of disappointing her family all weighed heavily on her decision. Tensions in her relationship with Cecil escalated. The night of July 11, 2024, started like many others in the Lekanyane Mashabane household. Didi and Cecil were home, their young child asleep upstairs. But as the evening wore on, tensions began to rise. What began as a discussion about their marriage quickly escalated into a heated argument. Didi, frustrated and desperate, once again expressed her desire for a divorce. 
the air in their Bramley home grew thick with anger and resentment. As their voices grew louder, the argument took a dark turn. In a moment of uncontrolled rage, Cecil lashed out. The exact sequence of events remains unclear, but the aftermath was devastating. By the time silence fell over the house, Teddy lay motionless on the living room carpet, her life brutally cut short. The following morning, an eerie quiet hung over the property. The couple's domestic worker, expecting to find them preparing for the day, instead encountered a sin of horror. Didi's body lay on the floor, surrounded by signs of a violent struggle. Nearby, Cecil was found unconscious, having apparently attempted to take his own life by overdosing on medication. As police and forensic teams descended on the scene, the full extent of the tragedy began to unfold. Didi's body bore the marks of a frenzied attack. Six stab wounds marred her once vibrant form on her chin, neck, chest and face. Each wound told a tale of fury and desperation, a stark contrast to the brilliance and potential Didi had embodied just days before. Cecil's unconscious state added another layer of complexity to the investigation. His suicide attempt spoke volumes about his state of mind following the attack. Was it an admission of guilt? A moment of clarity and regret? Or perhaps a final act of cowardice? These were questions the investigators would need to grapple with in the days to come. The crime scene presented a chaotic tableau for the investigators. Blood-stained surfaces, overturned furniture, and scattered personal belongings painted a picture of a violent confrontation. But physical evidence tells only part of the story. The real challenge lay in reconstructing the events that led to this tragic outcome. Piecing together the narrative proved to be a complex task. The absence of eyewitnesses meant that investigators had to rely heavily on forensic evidence and the eventual testimony of Cecil once he regained consciousness. They faced the daunting task of separating fact from fiction, truth from self-serving statements. The investigators delved into the couple's history, uncovering the 2022 assault case that had been withdrawn. This previous incident cast a long shadow over the current tragedy, raising questions about systemic failures and missed opportunities to prevent this outcome. Could more have been done to protect Didi? How had the situation escalated to this point despite previous warning signs? As the investigation progressed, the legal machinery began to grind into motion. Cecil Kekana now faces serious charges, murder and defeating the ends of justice. These charges reflect not only the act of taking Didi's life, but also the subsequent attempt to cover up or obstruct the course of justice. It's important to note at this stage, Cecil has not yet entered a plea regarding these charges. The legal process is just beginning, and many questions remain unanswered. What defense will Cecil mount? How will the evidence gathered at the scene stand up to scrutiny in court? The path to justice for Didi promises to be long and challenging. The tragic events of that July night have rippled far beyond the confines of the Lekanyane Mashabane home. They have sparked conversations about domestic violence, the pressures faced by women in South African society, and the often hidden struggles behind seemingly perfect relationships. Didi's story serves as a stark reminder of the potential for violence lacking beneath the surface of many households. The tragic end of Didi Lekanyane's life sent ripples far beyond her immediate circle. Her family, once proud of her achievements, now found themselves grappling with an unimaginable loss. In the wake of this heartbreak, they chose to channel their grief into a public call for justice. Their voices, tinged with sorrow and determination, echoed through the media, demanding answers and accountability. The case peeled back the layers of cultural norms and expectations that often keep women trapped in toxic relationships. It wasn't uncommon for families to pressure women to stay in marriages, even when faced with abuse, for the sake of maintaining appearances or family unity. Why hadn't there been more support? How could a brilliant scientist with so much potential end up in such a dire situation? 
These questions sparked heated debates in living rooms, offices and social media platforms across the country. In a move that surprised many, Sissel chose to abandon his bail application. This decision, possibly motivated by concerns for his own safety, was met with a mix of relief and frustration by Didi's family. On one hand, Sissel's choice to remain in custody spared the family from the distress of seeing him walk free while awaiting trial. It was a small comfort in their sea of grief. On the other hand, it highlighted the intense emotions surrounding the case and the potential for vigilante justice in a society grappling with high rates of gender-based violence. In the scientific community, Didi's colleagues mourned not just the loss of a brilliant mind, but also the potential breakthroughs in traditional African medicine that would never come to fruition. Her work became a symbol of the broader coast of domestic violence, not just to individuals and families, but to society as a whole. Didile Kanyane's story is one of unfulfilled promise. A brilliant scientist on the cusp of groundbreaking discoveries in traditional African medicine. Her life was cut tragically short. Didi's research focused on the medicinal uses of plants, work that could have revolutionized healthcare in South Africa and beyond. Didi's case highlights the urgent need for better support systems and a shift in societal attitudes. In the end, Didi's legacy is twofold. She leaves behind unfinished scientific work that held immense promise but her story has also become a powerful catalyst for change, pushing both the scientific community and South African society to confront hard truths and strive for meaningful progress.